Okay, so today what we're doing is we're playing around with different focal lengths. So I'm trying out a couple different uh, lens choices to film the exact same scene. Now the reason why I want to do this is to share with you guys how to capture um, a cinematic scene for your movie and what each lens choice does to that scene. So we're gonna go everywhere from a 16 millimeter to a 24 millimeter to a 35 millimeter and then go all the way up to a 200 mil with having 50 millimeters in between. I wanna show you all the different focal lengths, all the different lens choices and which one suits the best type of storytelling. <laughs> Okay, I'm back inside. It was a little too cold to do the episode outside, so I've gone into the edit. I started going through the different focal lengths, and I want to share with you guys my perspective of these perspectives. So we shot a diverse range of angles, everything from a close-up to a medium to a wide, and we captured the same thing over and over again with the different focal lengths. For those of you who want to skip to a specific focal length, anywhere from 16 millimeters all the way to 200 millimeters, I've added the focal lengths with their corresponding time codes in the description below. I highly recommend taking a look at all of these different focal lengths because each one gives your video a different flavor cinematically, emotionally, and um, even with how to shoot it and how your actors will feel and how you will feel throughout it. And as a reminder, cinematic preference is the preference to the user or to the audience member. There is no one way to do this. Now, this is all just my personal opinions. If you guys think otherwise, I'd love to hear those thoughts in the comments. But again, these are just my ideas of what the angles feel like. With that being said, let's get into our first focal length, which is our widest, which is the 16 millimeter. Now, some lenses I don't recommend doing close-ups for. For instance, the 16 millimeter to begin with it was very difficult to do close-ups for for two reasons. One was as an operator, I had to get super close to my talent while uh, performing this. Now, let's say if you're working with an actor who doesn't feel, let's say, as comfortable in front of a camera, shooting on a 16 millimeter, I highly recommend not utilizing. If you're really close to a person. Luckily, I'm shooting this with a good friend of mine, so it made it a whole lot easier. But uh, if, you're, if you're working with new or novice actors, try and shoot on a longer focal length. Shooting on something like a 200 mil, which we'll get into a little bit later, was a lot more comforting for my friend because I wasn't in his face with the camera. Now, the second thing about shooting with the 16 millimeter and capturing this coverage was the fact that it widened the frame and gave it actually a lot more of an artistic flavor. You'll see the wide angle actually being used a lot more often now just because it does create such an obscure frame. Now, if you guys are looking to make something a little bit more artsy or to make the audience feel a little bit more uncomfortable in an unflattering way, the 16 millimeter does that. The next focal length that we're going to tackle is the 24 millimeter. Now the 24 millimeter is sort of the widest sort of angle you can get while still being more flattering to your talent. Personally, it's not a lens choice that I'm really crazy about for a couple reasons. The first reason is it's not obscuring the frame enough to be like crazy different or interesting or artistic for me from just preference i really enjoy stuff that like makes you feel something and the 24 millimeter as nice of a lens as it is and as nice as a focal length as it is for a wide angle it doesn't do anything funky for me and maybe that's what you want our eyes i think look at around from 24 mil to like 35 mil somewhere within that range so this is the most natural focal length that being said, shooting a scene for me just wasn't really the greatest feeling. When we were shooting close-ups, I was getting too close to my talent, again, making them feel a little bit more uncomfortable. While I was shooting wides or mediums, it didn't, didn't obscure the frame enough for me to be like, oh my God, this is amazing. So personally, it wasn't my lens of choice, but you guys make that deciding factor when you watch this coverage. Now, the next focal length is the 35 mil. Now, this is when things start to go from sort of that wide angle to a little bit closer. A lot of people really like the 35 millimeter focal length. I'm a fan of it myself as well. We just shot a whole short film called French if you guys want to take a look at that, mostly at 35 millimeters. It's a really great focal length to keep sort of your nice wide shots while being uh, a little bit more cinematic and a little bit more flattering for your talent. Personally, I like being a little bit closer to the actors to capture certain coverage. It just makes me feel like I'm more involved with the scene. So as a shooter, I really enjoy 35 because I'm actually more part of the motion and emotion. Therefore, I can capture it better if let's say I'm doing like handheld and I'm really getting in within the scene. 
When it came to doing the wide angle, it was nice because I didn't have to like go 100 meters or 100 miles away to capture the wide, and it also didn't look too weird. It was starting to get into looking a little bit more cinematic because my background was starting to condense itself. For instance, for example, if you guys are shooting on like a telephoto, which we'll get to really soon, it really condenses the background. This, you're still getting that background. It's not super condensed, so if let's say you're shooting somewhere really interesting and you want your audience to be able to see what that background is or what the environment really feels like, uh, shooting on a 35 will capture the background, will capture the essence of the scene without sort of distorting anything, be that with focal length or with sort of like edge distortion like the 16 millimeter for instance. Let's move on to the 50 millimeter. Now the 50 millimeter, I'll say right now, is one of my favorite focal lengths in my cinematic toolkit. I bought a lens specifically for this, which is the Sigma Art Series lens. It's a beast of a lens. I absolutely love using it. And the reason why the 50 millimeter for me is one of my favorites is because it's probably one of the more traditional lenses that movies and feature films use. Some full length movies, full feature films, use the 50 millimeter and that's it. You can watch some movies that just completely utilize that lens on its own. So it has like all of cinema already banked on it. So when you watch a lot of movies, most coverage is shot from like 50 millimeter to like 85 millimeters because what it does is it condenses the background so you get that nice bokeh in the background, but you're still living within the moment. As an operator, like I said before, I really like being in the scene. I like being with my talent. I like feeling the scene out, especially with doing any sort of handheld movement. So when I'm with the characters, I'm able to operate better. I'm able to feel the scene out almost as if my, my operating skills are acting as well. Keeping at a 50 millimeter, I'm keeping my distance from my talent so that they feel more comfortable, but I'm also capturing some really beautiful stuff. Since you're starting to shoot on a longer lens, the nice thing about this is your background is starting to uh, compress together. Things are starting to all push in the background. So if you look at a comparison between like a 16 mil and the 50 millimeter, you can tell there's an immense difference between what that background looks like. So I really loved using the 50 millimeters for my medium shots. I really liked it for my close-ups. When it came to the wides, I wasn't over the moon about this. Again, it's not doing anything crazy to the background. It's not doing anything ridiculous ridiculous for my wide shot. So personally, I would use the 50 millimeter for more mediums and close-ups. Uh, if you guys are starting to make movies and you want one lens to help you out with making those movies, I would suggest picking up a 50 millimeter. Let's move on to my second to last lens, which is my 100 millimeter. I had a lot of fun with this focal length and it would, it kind of bleeds into what it felt like shooting with the 70 mil and the 200 mil. It looks very similar to the 70 millimeter. Again, that background is just squeezing in a little bit better, really good for heavy motion stuff and really good for giving your audience almost like a voyeuristic feel. So let's say you're shooting like a spy thriller and you want to make it feel like your characters are hiding something. The longer the lens you shoot it on, the less that you feel you're in Involved, and the more that you feel like you're watching. It makes the audience sort of feel like there's something that they don't know. If you shoot with a wide angle and you're up and close with your characters, you're like invasive. You're like, oh, hey, what's going on? What's, what's, hey, what's up? Now let's complete this whole thing by talking about the 200 millimeter. Now the 200 millimeter was one of my favorites as well, uh, just because it was so ridiculous with my background. Now, since I had the distance and since I was able to capture with this lens, I really enjoyed shooting at 200 mil just because it gained, just made things feel so much more action packed. Like when he was moving to get out of the car, I felt like there was so much motion within the frame, shooting my medium, shooting my wide, and shooting my close-ups looked super cool from every single focal length. Everything looked really flattering. The nuisance of shooting from this focal length is the same with the 100 mil as you've got to hike back. Like to get my wide shot with my 200 millimeter, it took a lot of time. I had to be like, a super duper far from my talent. So if you're in a rut or you don't have a, uh, if you're in a rut or if you're in a tight location, let's say you're shooting indoors for instance, this lens is really tricky to play around with. This focal length is uh, really annoying. But let's say you have the distance, uh, it looks super cool for wide angles because just the background just looks so interesting. And again, it gives the audience that voyeuristic feel. It makes you feel like your characters are hiding something from you and you don't know what that is. Okay, guys, that was a huge episode, a lot of stuff to talk about it, but I really wanted to do this. I've wanted to do this video for a long 
time. Um, just learning about focal lengths, learning about lenses and their corresponding effects is so valuable as a shooter, as a creator. And for me, when I started getting into projects, I really didn't know what would be the best lens for different feelings or emotions. For those of you who enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, get us, give us a subscribe as well. It would really mean a whole lot. And um, let me know what's your favorite focal length with the corresponding emotion. Let me know that in the comment section below. And if you guys sort of didn't write down on your pen and paper the lenses that I use or a bit of the description about them, there will be a blog post in the description below that you guys can click onto that and see all of, all of the information about it. That's it, that's all. I'll see you guys later. Keep making some great stuff and I will see you all in another video. Take care.